in Jesus Christ fed the 5,000 is because he had compassion on them. He had compassion on them. It's because Jesus had compassion on them. It's because Jesus had compassion on them. The first thing Jesus established or exhibit is that he had compassion on the people. Not ah, look at the crowd. What a mighty crowd is this. My ministry is growing. My anointing is increasing. No. The word compassion. Look at it in verse 2 of Mark chapter 8. And have compassion on the multitude. And have compassion on the multitude. The same thing. This is not a gimmick. This is not trying to write a story. This is a reality. My question today is that do you have compassion like Jesus Christ? What you do, do you do it out of compassion? Concern for others? Caring for others? Or is because that man is anointed man of God? That's why you only go and give him something. Because you want to benefit from that fellow. That's why you give him today. So that when it is your turn, next time he can also give to you. Is that the reason? Or you are in that church because you know that they have people there. It's not because you have the love for Christ and for the people in that church. But because they help people there. Is that the reason why you want to be fed? Is that the reason why you want to be fulfilled? Why do you want to be fulfilled? Is your reason for becoming a prosperous somebody is just to meet your own need and not the need of others? That's why many are still languishing in poverty. No matter how you have, as long as your riches is not reaching others, you are poor. As long as your riches is not extended to others in the genuine and true compassion for others, and particularly the household of faith, you are making a shipwreck of your faith. One of the greatest principles in this our Christian journey that I've also discovered in recent time is the spirit of compassion for others. The spirit of compassion for others. The spirit of compassion for others. My prayer for you is that from today, as you are hearing me, as many that are hooking on, as many that are that have tuned on and is listening to this word this morning, your the spirit of compassion will come upon you. Not that you are pitying that person. Many are pitying people today. Oh, sorry, oh. It is not God will help you out. Oh. God will do this. Oh. Well, oh. Oh. No. I'm talking about having a compassion. Being concerned and thinking and start to navigate. What can I do to better this person's life? What can I do to be of help to this person? That is compassion. How can I solve the problem of this man? You know this guy is going through this situation genuinely. 
you know this guy is is in this problem he's not faking it jesus saw the multitude and he saw that they were in a serious problem the first problem of this very multitude is that they do not have a shepherd look at it verse 34 of chapter 6 and when jesus when he came out he saw the great multitude and was moved with compassion great multitude not just ordinary multitude again it was a great multitude that have come after him they have come to seek his face they have come from all cities to gather and hear him and face him because he knew but he looked deep inside their heart he looked deep beyond their faces and the Bible, the Bible says he was moved with compassion number one Come on. because they were like sheep not having a shepherd so he began to teach them many things pastor reverend bishop is that the way you are looking at the people that they do not have a shepherd somebody to shepherd them to feed them or you just want them to make the number of your church so that you can you can you can be counting five thousand six thousand twenty thousand fifty thousand all you go to do evangelism for is because you want the numbers to increase not the numbers of solution and life that you want to impact even you as ordinary personality what are you thinking about people have you come to the place of taking a covenant that in this my life i want to start to change the life of people i want to start to affect the life of people do you know why the world is like this that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer is because there is no compassion Setting in. Everybody is thinking about his or her self. No compassion. Yes. I, 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 I am my family. You know it. You know what I'm talking about. As many as are hearing me this morning, you know what I am talking about. Nobody is excused out of this matter. Don't excuse yourself. Say, I don't have. I don't, you don't have what? Was that widow having? The widow that fed Elijah for the remaining three and a half years. Does he have anything? Why would even God send Elijah to a widow? Do you know why? I'll tell you today. Because that widow has the spirit of compassion. Yes, the widow is the widow has the spirit of compassion. Yes, God knows that this widow is a giver. He helps, he, 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 he concerned about others, despite that he was also in a serious problem. No husband, only one son that remains. Death is coming. Okay, no problem. We're gonna take it that way. I'm going to eat all this and die. No, wahala. God, to you be glorified. And he said to Elijah, Elijah said, don't worry. You give me first. And every other thing will be settled. If I tell a widow that one today, he will tell me, Pastor Greg, you are wicked. You are a wicked man. Or I tell somebody that is telling me, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. So this man is wicked man. He's thinking about himself. He doesn't know that it is your own miracle I am thinking about. There is power in giving than receiving. Yes, there is power in giving than receiving, but it must be moved and must be exercised in compassion through faith. You will see God moving. It's because we don't have compassion. 
you will only give when prophet have told you go and give to one man of God. Go and give to the, the needy. Look, today, make sure this week you give uh, uh, fruit to the needy and God will open your door. You are only doing it for your own selfish reason. You are not paying tithes because you have compassion. You are truly consigned about the kingdom of God. And a servant, you are paying tithes so that God can open the heavens over your head. Of course, God said he will do that. There's no doubt about it. But that's the reason. That's your own major reason. Don't you think if you have a major reason, you are doing it from the heart of your heart, just worshipping God, knowing truly well according to his word, he will open heaven. Brother, you will be blessed. Beyond human comprehension. He had compassion on them because they do not have a shepherd over their head. Nobody to feed them. That's all. Nobody to give them food. Nobody to feed them. So he has to feed them, fed them. He had compassion over them. But before he fed them, he did what? He fed them with the word. He gave them the word. He gave them the word. He made them to understand that, look, no problem. I have compassion on you guys. We are going to eat, but look, this is the way to continue to have food on your table by the word of God. How do I know? It's simple. He said it to the devil. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live. In other words, man need bread. Man must work. Man must work. You know that song? But man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. You need the physical bread and you need the spiritual bread. For you to continue to have food on your table, you need the physical bread you need the spiritual bread. Life is all about physical bread and spiritual bread from the right source. I say it one more time. Life is all about physical bread and spiritual bread from the right source. And Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life. He that hated me shall not die, but live forever. I am bread. I am not only the bread, I will also give you what? Water. And not just water, the water will I give you. I will give you living water. Why? Because I have compassion on you. But you must first be fed with the word. And the Bible says, He teach them, He taught them. So He began to teach them many things. How to get bread, how to survive, how to accomplish, because He has compassion. Understand that the beginning of His, his teaching and Wanting to feed the people at last is because he had compassion on them. And what happened? At the end, he fed them with food, physical food. He fed them with physical food. Likewise, in Mark chapter 8 and verse 2, the Bible says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have being because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Why did he feed this, this four hundred, this four thousand people here? 
He fed them because they had been with him for three days. How many days have you been with Jesus? The first people, he fed them because he had compassion on them and fed them because they have no shepherd to feed them. And he started it by feeding them with the word, teaching them of many things. In this place, he fed, he had compassion on them also and fed them because they have been with him for how many days? Three days and have nothing to eat. What, what, what a Lord we have. They have been with him for three days. How many days have you been with the Lord? How many years have you been with the Lord? How have you endured with the Lord? How patient have you been with Christ? They have been with him. Underline that word. Because they have now been with me. They have been with him. Have you been with the Lord? How many days? How many days have you been with the Lord? What is your Christian growth like? These ones have been with the Lord three days. Three days is symbolic. Three is a symbol of Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three days he died and on the third day he resurrected. Three is a symbol of unity. He said if three, one or two or, or three people will agree, say two people agree of anything, I will do it. He now said where or two or three people are and there in their midst, three is a symbol of unity, of one accord. You know what people will say, I'm going to say it in English, but there's a word that Yoruba people normally say that three stones cannot unturn the pot on the fire. Go and check anywhere they are using charcoal or firewood. It must be three stones. Three stones. Three stones in particular, not four. If they put four, it's three. The three in particular, they normally put three. Check your gas. Those three things. You see those things on your gas cooker. If it's more, if it's more than three, then it's, a, it's, a, it's another special one. But majorly, it's three. Your pot cannot have three handles. You have only two. But your cooking stove, gas, is three points. Where the, the, the something will sit upon. That is unity, balance. Three, how have you been established in the Lord? And you want the Lord to feed you. He has compassion on you. It's for you now to remain with him. You are too much in a haste. So three is symbolic. I can count how many where three is, is unique. He said in the mouth of two or three witness, the word is established. Three is symbolic. The soul, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Even man is three patterns. Is symbolic of unity. Symbolic of total agreement. How long have you been with the Lord? How far have you settled with the Lord? One year, two years, three years, four years? It's not the matter of the years. It's the matter of you being within. And why? So that He can feed you. He will feed you, teach you, tell you many things you need to know. And as you comply, as you agree, as you obey, as you err to it, you start to see manifestation. 
it doesn't matter how long is your spirit soul and body with the Lord he had compassion it is as a result of his compassion God that's that's why he sent Jesus Christ to this earth to die for you and for me it's as a result of his compassion for God so loved the world that is compassion that's why I told you compassion is the is the depth of absolute agape kind of love not pity that word pity looks to be trying to be uh, thinking that you are better than the other when you pity somebody you are I pity this man who maybe because you are not in that position that's why you are you what you say I have compassion ah what can I do what can I do to help this person how can I be of a of a blessing look it does not matter no matter how small that blessing may be no matter how little that help you want to render may be even though it is five naira and you know that is what you have and you said look I want to show it to somebody I was coming the other day it's not as if I did not have money in my pocket it's not as if I did not have money or I did not have food to eat in the house but a, 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 an elderly woman saw me she said pastor I said ma I greeted I bowed my head said bless you mommy how are you ma I said pastor we've not seen you for some time now in our area to preach to us that's my outreach ministry if we have not seen you it's part of it this is also outreach I'm reaching out to you all you like it or not yes say pastor but we've not seen you I said well it's mobility carrying the load the speakers sometimes it's not a joke I said pastor God bless you the Lord will strengthen you the Lord will help you I did. They, they were giving that woman money in my present, in my present, in my very face. They were giving her some change, 50 naira, 200, and all of you. The woman said, Pastor, this is what I have. I'm just collecting it now. I want to put it in your hand. I said, Please, man, no, no, don't worry. He said, No, I'm going to show this seed in your hand. The whole people were dazed. People, they were looking. They were just looking at me and looking at us. The woman collected it from the person that gave it to her and placed that money in my hand. I said, what is happening here? Holy Spirit said, receive it. Don't deny it. And I pray for this woman. In a simple way, I prayed. And I believe she has contacted a blessing. Yes, it's for a purpose. I was having money in my hand. I was even having food stuff in my nylon bag. It's not as if I was trying to beg her to give me more. I didn't beg her. But that woman has contacted a blessing. It may not be in money. Maybe it's a divine protection, something that wants to happen somewhere around the corner. She just cue cue into it. He gave it from her spirit. Hello, sir. How long have you been with the Lord? How long have you been a blessing to the Lord if they were with him for three days? They were with him. They sat down with him. He was with them. And said, hi, these people, no food, nothing. He said, no, I must feed them. No matter how long it may be, just stay with the Lord. He's going to feed you. And in summary this morning is that the compassion of the Lord has never failed. The compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ has never failed and it can never fail. It remains forever from eternity to eternity. The compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. It remains and what is what does his compassion wants to do for you and me is to feed you and me with the spiritual food and with the physical food for our maximum fulfillment now 
on this earth planet and until he returns. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God that proceeds out of his mouth. My brother, my sister, you also is therefore encouraged, employed to have compassion. Have compassion. Have compassion on the lost multitude. Have compassion on people dying every day, going to hell. Be a partner of the kingdom of God that is reaching out to others. Hear me and hear well. As many that are sowing to this work, we all are working together. Me and you, we are doing it. There's a particular wonderful friend of mine that supplies me with battery. Wonderful. I'm going to mention the name. We all are winning the souls together. The first one is the one that gave it to me. A wonderful neighbor of mine. We are winning the souls together. Every time I am preaching and the battery is moving. No, like now, I am still on. We are doing it together. And let me tell you the truth. When you sow into the work of God with compassion, not to pity anybody, not because the man of God does not have. The problem you have and the problem that you are going to continue to have is not giving money is not to get money back. Oh, it's not all about money. Give money and you get money. Give money and you get prosperity. There are many things when you give you sow into the work, you sow into the life, you sow into the kingdom, and God will protect and shield you from many dangers you cannot comprehend. Yes, if God will open your eyes to see what is happening, you will know that it is God that is protecting you because you yourself has positioned yourself to support the work. He says, seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. The kingdom of God, the propagation, the, the prosperity of his kingdom. Seek it first. And his act, his character, his behavior, his righteousness, the way he lives, live like it. And what will happen? Every other thing shall be added unto you. But it must be done from the basis of compassion. You must have compassion for the work of God. You must have compassion for the things of God. You must have compassion for the people of God. You must have compassion for your neighbor. You must have compassion for those around you. With that compassion, you can get a good result when you sow your seed, when you give out. The good Samaritan, it was a result of compassion. And he had compassion. My brother, all I'm telling you this morning is to allow the spirit of compassion to come upon you. That is absolute depth of love for others, for the kingdom of God, for the things of God, for the, for the servants of God. Love, the depth of love, the agape Love that is consigned, not just love, not just having the, I love the word of God, I love that our church. No! What are you doing for the church to go ahead? How many is praying for the church now? That the church should be open up. If for the church, let the church be open up in Lagos and in other states that has been shut down. Let the church be open up. How many are praying, really praying, praying really, really truth, or you are happy? No church on Sunday. Let me relax. Let it become part of my weekend full time. How many are praying for truth? It's in the church that we will pray for deliverance because Jesus Christ says that my house shall be the place of prayer or the house of prayer for all nations. And yet the house of prayer has been shut down. How do we survive it? 
How do we survive it? For how many days now? It's not as because I have a hundred hundred thousand capacity a congregation. No, that's not my problem. That's not my own at all. I am beyond that. But it, it comes to God be the glory. But more, no, it's not as if I have it. It's those that have hundred thousand that will be hungry now. Say, look at us, because they are used to it. The wall is my own congregation. The wall, church without wall, nine in deal. If you don't know, when I was about to set up the tower, I was I, I inside my spirit. I believe you all, every denomination in this wall. As you are hearing me, you are part of this church. Yes, and you believe it. Amen. So yeah, brother, how many hours? 30 minutes have you prayed for the church? Pray, not because it is your church. Pray for the global church of, the, of Christ. To resume back. Americas, they are still in lockdown in many states. In many countries, they are still in lockdown globally. No church, no more, no mocks. How many days are you praying, interceding? Not for your church. For the church of Christ, the body of Christ, so that we can gather again as one. It's not good that we are not gathering. Yes. I'm not saying that we are going to enforce that people should go and gather. But it's not the best. He said, forsake not the gathering of the brethren. We have left the level of house fellowship. Yes, we have left that level. Even if we return back to that level, it's not going to be like it again. Hello. We have left the level. Don't deceive yourself. You can't leave a, a child uh, you, when you are crawling. You now start to crawl and say, no, it won't be palatable. It won't be interesting. But that's not what I'm preaching to you today. We have left that level. We are in another level. Level of the global gathering. Yes, thank God for the internet. Thank God for the, for the media. Praise God. But there is still need for us to gather physically. All I'm saying is that let us pray so that this pandemic will not only be uh, uh, be silented, but it will be eradicated. The thing is now silent. Is there? Kokoro Ajenero is there, eating gradually, killing people subtly. But no, we don't want it. We want it to be eradicated. And if it, this is God's end time move, let God suppress it because of you and me as the church of Christ. My brother, my sister, have compassion. That is the key to fulfillment and to command the abundance of God made manifest in your life and in my life. Compassion. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bow your head and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. I pray for the little word that has been spoken. That every one of us, including the speaker, the spirit of compassion, love, genuine love, love that concerns, love that cares for, love that wants to see the goodness of others, the progress of others, the fulfillment of others, apart from ourselves, that kind of love, that want to care for others. Father, I pray, let that love, let that spirit of compassion rest upon us and bring about our fulfillment in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh God, the same kind of compassion that is in our Lord Jesus. And the Bible says, and they have compassion over Jerusalem. The Bible says, and he have compassion over Lazarus, and he wept. It's as a result of his compassion that makes him to weep concerning Lazarus. Father, he did not just have compassion and leave the nations like that, and left the individuals like that. Rather, his compassion brought about their impact. He brought about a turnaround in their lives. Father, I pray that as individually, the same kind of compassion that our Lord has will rest upon us and we will start to make impact in the life of others. Indeed, 
in Jesus' name. Not for selfish reasons, but for total love, agape kind of love in all ramification in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for today. I bless your name. And I pray that, Lord, you will bring healing to your nation. You will bring healing to the global world. That every form of coronavirus will totally not only be silented, but will be eradicated in the name of Jesus Christ. And the purpose of Christ, the purpose of God in this end time will be fulfilled in the life of every Christian brothers and sisters. Hear me as Jesus prepare for his return in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and Jesus Christ said, Occupy till I come. The grace to occupy, the grace to be in charge, the grace to be in control till Jesus return. Let it rest upon everyone under the sound of my voice this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Are you there? You've not known Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. Just in a few seconds, I want you to run to Jesus. Or you are there. You have left the faith. You have denied Christ as a result of your act and attitude. Yes, if there is church now, you will have prepared to go to church this morning, but there is no church opening. My brother, why don't you take this time in this partial shutdown now and look about your relationship with Christ? and make a turnaround. I want you to pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, today I believe that you are the son of the living God and you are full of compassion and that is why you came and died for me on the cross of Calvary and on the third day you resurrect for my righteousness. Jesus, son of the living God, I am a sinner. I ask that you forgive me my sins. And because you have died for me on the cross of Calvary, today, I believe it in my heart. I believe it in my heart that you resurrect for my righteousness. I believe it and I know that is the truth. And I'm confessing you with my mouth as my Lord and Savior from this day henceforth and forevermore. Amen. I believe you are my Redeemer and my Savior, Jesus, Son of the living God. Come into my heart. Write my name in the book of life. Now and forevermore. I declare I am a child of God. I am born again. In Jesus name. Amen. As many that have prayed that prayer. I congratulate you. And I pray that the purpose of God. His goodness and his compassion. Will start to reign in your life. To bring you to the place of fulfillment. And total victory. In all ramification. In Jesus name. You are blessed in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace that I brought you, that same grace will keep you even to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new species now. What must I do? Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. Live by the standard of the word of God. And above all, tell somebody, with compassion in your heart, with true love and care for the world, Jesus loves you and your life will never remain the same. God bless you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful, glorious Sunday. And to everyone there hearing me, it is a glorious Sunday for you and a fulfilling week for you this week in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed, protected, preserved promoted and provided for in all ramification in Jesus name. Amen. Go in this thy might and prosper in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is Lord.